Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the center, the foci, the vertices, and the co-vertices of an ellipse when it's not written in our standard form uh, up here and up here. You can see that it's all expanded out. So basically to find the center, if you remember, I have all the information written up there. The center is your H and your K, which is clearly displayed in these two um, uh, formulas, but in these two forms, but they're not clearly displayed in these two forms. Uh, a represents the distance from your vertices to your center. B represents the distance from your uh, co-vertices from your center, which are clearly represented here, which are not clearly represented here. So basically what we need to do to determine our uh, center, foci, our vertices, co-vertices, and eventually our uh, foci is to transform these equations into these, standard, into these forms. And the way that we can do that is one thing we kind of notice, and something that we've done in quadratics as well as did in hyperbolas and with circles, is we notice that we have binomial squares. And we can create a binomial squared by factoring out down a tr perfect square trinomial. So basically what we need to do is create perfect square trinomials. Now you can see that my x and my y are separated. So basically what I'm going to do to create a perfect square trinomial is I'm going to separate my x terms and my y terms. You can see here I have a 9x squared and a negative 54x. I'm going to group those together. And I have a 4y squared and a 40y. I'm going to group those together. Now let me just make sure I believe that's equal to 0. OK. And then they're always equal to 1, so I'm going to set that over to the other side. All right, so first step, 9x squared minus 54x plus 4y squared plus 40y equals negative 37. So I subtracted the 37 to the other side. All right. Now, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some parentheses to group the x terms and group the y terms. Okay. Now, by grouping these terms, um, basically what I'm going to do is you can see that these are not perfect square trinomials. These are two binomials. right? And what I'm going to do is I need to create a perfect square trinomial. And to do that, we're going to do completing the square. Um, now, I erased that over here, but just remember um, Remember, for completing the square, though, we cannot have a, let me just kind of write that out, a x squared plus b x plus c. OK, so that's a standard form of a quadratic. And basically, you can see that now, inside these parentheses, I have two quadratics. They're just not trinomials. They're binomials. So I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial. Um, to do that, though, we, ha we cannot have a be equal to any other number besides 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 9. I'm going to use blue in this one. All right, so I'm going to factor out a 9 in this case. And that's going to leave me with a x squared minus uh, 6, 6x. And then over here, I'm going to factor out a 4. And that's going to leave me with a y squared plus 10y equals negative 37. OK, follow me? Good. So now that we have a is equal to 1, um, you can see here, now we can complete the square. And the process of completing the square is we're going to take the value b of our now simplified trinomial. We're going to take the value b and divide it by um, 2 and then square it. So it basically looks like this, b divided by 2 squared. So for our first trinomial, I'm going to take a negative 6 divided by 2 and square it. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is equal to 9. And then I do the same thing over here. I do 10 divided by 2, because again, that's my b. It's the coefficient of my linear term. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. Okay. Now I'm going to take those values, and I'm going to insert them into each parentheses to create a perfect square trinomial. So now i got a lot of colors going on. So I'm going to have 9 times. x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 4 times y squared plus 10y plus 25 and parentheses equals negative 37. 
Okay, so here's where it gets interesting because what I did is, you know, I took these values and I added them to the left side of the equation. But if you remember when you're first solving equations, whatever you add to one side, you have to add to the other side, right? Whatever you multiply on one side, you have to multiply to the other side. So um, that's exactly what we need to do in this case. However, we need to understand that based on the distributive property, I'm not really adding a 9. I'm adding a 9 that's being multiplied by a 9. I'm not really adding a 25. I'm adding a 25 that's being multiplied by a 4. So I'm still going to add my 25, but I need to multiply that by 4. I'm still adding a 9, but that 9 is being multiplied by 9. Whew. So now you can see I have my perfect square trinomials, right? Which the reason why, again, we want perfect square trinomials is because we can factor them down to binomial squares. Um, I'm just going to do, do them real quick as a product. So that's x minus 3 times x minus 3. This one is y plus 5 times y plus 5. Okay? And you should get pretty familiar with factoring down perfect square trinomials because you know they're always factorable. So that's what's nice about completing square. You, comp you create a perfect square trinomial that you know is factorable. All right, so now let's just go ahead and simplify my information. I have 9 times. This I can rewrite as a binomial squared, which we like, plus 4 times this written as a binomial squared equals, um, you know, I'm just going to add these up in my calculator. I don't want to do the math. 37 plus 100 plus 81 gives me 144. All right, now, it looks pretty close, right? I at least created my binomial squared, but I still don't have the values for a and for b. So to do that, what I now need to do is divide by 144 on both sides, because you need both of these equations to be equal to 1, not equal to 144. So by the power of the distributive property, um, remember if you have an expression a times b plus c, that equals a times b plus a times c. Well, if you have b plus c divided by a, that equals b over a plus c over a. So in reality, I'm dividing the 9 over 1 over 44 and the 4 over 144 to save a little space. I am going to uh, just compute that. I think it's 30, uh, 1 over 16, and 4 divided by 144, 1 over 36. I knew it was 1 over 36. OK, so this 9 over 144 reduces to 1 over 16, and 4 over 144 reduces to 1 over 36. So now I have my equation as x minus 3 squared over 16 plus y plus 5 squared over 36 equals 1. Ta-da! Look at we already did all this. So um, <laughs> now that was just writing into equation. We still need to figure out what the center is, the vertices, the co-vertices, and the foci. All right, so I'm going to try to move through that uh, fairly quickly because um, we've already kind of covered a lot of that information. The main important thing is we want to figure out what a squared and what b squared is. So remember, a squared is always larger than b squared. So in this case, I can say that a squared is equal to 36. Um, so therefore, a is equal to 6. We know that b squared is equal to 16. So b is equal to 4. We can also automatically find c squared by using that formula. So c squared is equal to a squared, which is 36, minus b squared, which is 16. So c squared is going to equal 20. And therefore, c is equal to, um, if you take the square root, c, uh, take the square root of both, is c is equal to the square root of 20, which therefore, c, which is equal to uh, 2 square root of 5. OK, I'm just moving along. We've already done some problems that are similar to that. Um, again, I still like to graph to be able to identify all the information. So I'm just going to plot this. I know my uh, center. I'll write the center out first. Center is your h and your k. Remember, it's always the opposites. So center, in this case, is going to be 3, comma, negative 5. So let's go ahead and plot that information. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. We know that since a squared is under my y, I know I'm going to have a vertical major axis. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to go like this. So that means my vertices are going to be going up and down. right? My major axis is vertical. 
Okay, so that's very important because here's my center. Now that I know what the value of a is, which is 6, that means my vertices are going to be going up and down from that. And actually, you know what? Um, let me actually just write it like this. So vertices, without even actually looking at the graph, let's kind of move forward with this. My vertices are going to be going up and down from my center. So basically, the x coordinate remains the same, but the y coordinate is now negative 5 plus or minus 6. Right? Well, I can simplify that to 3 comma uh, 1 and 3 comma negative 11. Uh, my foci are also lying on the major axis. So that's going to again go being up and down from my center. So the, I'm going to plus or minus that from the y coordinate. So my foci, the x coordinate, remains unchanged. C is going to be 2 square root of 5. Oops. Sorry. So that's negative 5 plus or minus 2 square root of 5. Well, I can't simplify that. I can't combine those like I did for vertices. So I'm going to leave it as is. And then lastly, I have my covertices. Uh, covertices are now going to be left and right because they're going to be going left and right on my, my minor axis. So therefore, I'm going to be plus or minusing from the x coordinate of the center. And that's going to be at 4. So it's basically going to look like this, 3 plus or minus 4, comma, negative 5 as the y coordinate remains unchanged. So therefore, those two points can be uh, 7, comma, negative 5, and negative 1, comma, negative 5. And again, my recommendation, like I did in previous problems, would be to plot that out so you can visualize it. I just don't have enough time because you can see how much time that took for me to do this one problem, and I still have another one to do. So let's go and do this again. You can also stop, try it on your own, and then come back. I'm just going to work through this one a little bit quicker. I'm um, not explaining as, as much of the steps in detail, but I'm going to follow basically the exact same process I did over here. The first step is to group my x's and to group my y's. and then get the variable over to the other side. I then I am going to factor out uh, my a in both cases. So I have perfect square trinomials. Oh, I'm sorry, so I have a trinomial where a is equal to 1. This one already has a equals 1, so that's perfect. OK, now I'm going to complete the square. So I'm going to take my new b and divide it by 2, and then square it. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is equal to 9. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is equal to 1. Now I'm going to take those values, add them into the parentheses. So that's plus 9 plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals 8. But remember, whatever I do on the left side, I have to add it to the right side. So I added a 9, but that 9 is being multiplied by a 3. And I added a 1, and that 1 is just being multiplied by 1, so that's going to be plus 1. <sighs> OK, so now I can factor this down. Um, this as a perfect square trinomial is going to be x plus 3 squared. Plus this as a perfect square trinomial is going to be y minus 1 squared. And then 3 times 9 is 27, plus 1 is 28, plus 8 is going to be 36. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and divide by 36. And basically, just applying the distributive property um, immediately, rather than rewriting it like this, I'll just distribute it automatically. 3 divided by 36 is going to be 12. So I have x plus 3 squared equals 12 plus y minus 1 squared over. What? I thought I did that. Did I write those down wrong? Huh. I thought I chose two problems. Ah, well, whatever. So that becomes 36. Uh, <coughs> Again, what you can see is my variable 36, uh, my a squared, oh, that's sorry, that's equal to 1. So again, you can see that I now have, again, another vertical major axis. Um, so therefore, I'm going to be going up and down from my center. Uh, first thing I want to do is plot the center, which I notice is going to be at negative 3, comma 1. So I'll write center, negative 3, comma 1. And I do like to still kind of plot that. Negative 1, 2, 3, comma 1. That's my center. 
Since a squared is over the a, it's going to be a vertical major axis. OK? And then I'm going to have a horizontal minor axis. Did I find C? Oh, yeah, I did find C. OK. Um, therefore, now I can go ahead and determine what my a squared, b squared, and c squared is. So a squared, we determined, is going to be 36. That means uh, a is equal to 6. b squared is equal to 12. Therefore, b is equal to the square root of 12, which, again, if you simplify that, is going to be 2 radical 3. Right at the end. And then I have c squared is going to equal to 36 minus 12. Um, c squared is equal to 34. That's going to be 24. Which again, if you take the square root, c equals the square root of 24. Then you just want to see which square numbers divide into it. I'll break it down like since I didn't do that one. So that becomes 4 times 6, which equals to 2 radical 6. Okay, So we have two radicals in this problem. Mm, not so much fun, but we can do it. Um, actually, it makes it much easier to graph it. Uh, so not, or not to graph it, but to label the vertices and everything else. So vertices. That's going to be A, right? And again, that's going up and down. So we're going to add the value of A up and down. I don't know where the vertices are. They're like somewhere in here, right? So what I, my x value, since they lie on the major axis, my x value is not changing. So I'm going to keep negative 3. However, the y value is going to change because I'm going to go up A and I'm going to go down A. So basically, I'm taking the y value and I'm adding and subtracting A, which is 6. Now, obviously, I can add 1 plus or minus 6. So I'm going to simplify that to negative 3, comma, 7, and negative 3, comma, negative 5. Fortunately for me, though, the rest of them I can't simplify. So foci is going to be the same thing. Your foci lies somewhere on the major axis. And so the x coordinate remains the same. But the y coordinate. Um, y coordinate is going to be plus or minus c, which is 2 radical 6. And since I can't simplify that, I'm just going to leave that as is. And then we'll do our covertices. But remember, the covertices are on your minor axis, right? So they're going to be going left and right. So that means my x coordinate is actually going to be changing left or right. So rather than uh, my y coordinate remains the same, which is 1. But now my x coordinate, negative 3, is going to be plus or minus the value of b, which is 2 radical 3, comma, 1. OK, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine, um, that is how you determine the center, the vertices, the covertices, and the foci of an ellipse by completing the square. Thanks.